Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my favorite artist resources, websites, and apps that basically help you with drawing. Like, not a drawing app, but, well, you'll see what I mean. The first one I'm testing out here is called VizRef. Um, it's basically a app that you can get on your iPad and you can tack it alongside your Procreate or whatever drawing app you like to use. Um, and it just holds together all of your references really, really easily. Um, not only can you like upload a picture that's in your camera roll, but you can also just copy and paste images from like Google Images, which I find super helpful because I hate having to save everything that I want to use as a reference. It's also really easy to move everything around within the space and I love the fact that you can have it in sort of a small window while you're working in another um, like drawing program. It's just really really helpful. I've always struggled with how to hold all of my references and that's kind of why I don't use them very much which is really bad. Um, so this is definitely something I would highly recommend to you guys. Um, so basically the way I like to use it is I start off with like a rough idea of what illustration I want to do. Um, in this case, I wanted to do some like concept art for one of the stories that I've always wanted to work on. Um, it's definitely going to have to wait until after Unfamiliar is done, but um, I knew I had like a forest scene and like some like witchy sort of like clothes, more old fashioned, um, as well as like some ferns and you know, forest scene stuff. So I started by finding a bunch of different um, reference images that I knew would be helpful. And then as I continued to work on the illustration, I would drag and drop stuff into that little VizRef window whenever I needed more um, references. Unfortunately, VizRef isn't a free app, but it is pretty affordable as far as like art supply kind of stuff goes. Um, there's even a light version that you can get on your phone that's only $2, and VizRef's full version on the iPad is about 4 or 5 for the ink segment, I don't actually have a resource related to the picture or anything, so I'm going to speed it up really, really fast. But before I do, I did want to mention that if you don't know, Procreate does actually have line smoothing. If you have trouble with your lines being sort of like jittery, all you have to do is click on the brush that you're using and then increase the streamline setting until it's smooth enough for you. Uh, just sort of a fun tip that I've recently noticed. It's not the easiest thing to find, so um, a lot of people think there's no line stabilization in Procreate, but there is. Um, I wanted to say that before I, you know, sped through this whole inking process. This took forever. <laughs> Now that all the liner is done, it's time to start coloring, and for that I have a very special website. This is called Palette Generator. It's totally free and it's really easy to use. Basically you just upload a file onto the website and it automatically selects out the dominant colors from that picture, which basically gives you a really really easy palette that you know is going to go together, especially when it's a photo of something that like is in the real natural world, you know that your colors are going to look really like mature and well selected. So um, if you're not naturally good at picking out colors or if you just need a color palette in a pinch that has a certain mood, this is a really easy way to um, get a color palette to start working with. This is also surprisingly advanced. You can actually decide how many colors they should be sampling. It shows you like how much of the color is in it through this like pie chart system. And you can even change the sample of the image by like selecting different parts of the image if you only like like the colors in a certain part of the image you can like crop it in the actual website which is just crazy to me I decided to use two different images because they kind of both together had the vibe I was going for. I wanted it to look fresh and like green and healthy, but also to have this like misty spookiness. So I decided to pick basically like two different color palettes that were sort of complementary. And then I just dropped them into the image so that I could eyedropper tool all of those colors into my illustration. The cool thing about this website is that it kind of works wherever. You can just take a screenshot of the palettes and put them onto your iPad, put them onto your phone, use them obviously in your computer like in Photoshop or something like that. It's just really versatile. I also recommend looking at the pie chart and sort of using it as a guide to how much of that color you're using, but you really don't have to do that. Um, I actually made a like tonal 
sort of plan for this illustration before and that sort of helped me figure out where the color should go but generally trying to decide an area of the picture that's going to be lighter than the background or darker than the background is a good way to separate your foreground and background elements um, and using these color wheels um, to sort of guide you uh, in that way can also be really useful um, I generally wouldn't say that you have to 100% commit to just the colors in here. In fact, that might not actually be enough color depending on what your illustration is. Personally, even with the two different wheels that I was using, I still found myself slightly uh, moving outside of just what was there. Um, but I've noticed that in blending the colors that are present, you can still have an incredibly harmonious um, image and it still helps a ton um, with actually like picking out your palette. It's starting from scratch is really difficult. I find even for me who I feel like I'm like, I've never really struggled with color as much as I have with other <laughs> fundamentals. Um, and even I felt a tremendous relief just like knowing, okay, here are the colors that I'm going to be using and I'm only going to deviate from them if I actually want to. Um, it's really helpful just as a guideline. As I was working on this, I started to think, man, I really like how this is turning out, but I wish our pose was just a little bit more dynamic. And then I got to thinking about Line of Action, which is one of my favorite websites for doing figure drawing. Line of Action is basically a website that you just go on and you can set up like different sort of like a class where it will show you different random figure drawing images that you're supposed to draw at different intervals or you can just have them all be at the same interval and you can sort of determine how long it's going to be it's super useful and it gives you a really good like art studio sort of like experience um it's a really good exercise and probably a good thing to do during quarantine if you're looking to sharpen up some of your skills but it's also really great if you're just trying to think of a pose you can just look through all of the different Different poses and wait until something strikes your fancy. For example, that image of the girl rappelling down like from the ceiling, I thought it was really cool and the perspective gave it like a really like awesome cartoony dramatic sort of look. Um, so I felt compelled to keep sketching it until she started to sort of look like Sailor Moon a little bit. Um, generally it's just really good for breaking up art block, giving you good pose ideas, breaking up like the you know st stiffness in your um, poses if that's something you have an issue with. I really recommend it for all of those things. Um, so line of action is definitely something to check out and it's free as well. So now you have resources to pick out your colors for you, help you with poses, and even hold all your references, but what if you're doing something like concept art where there's a lot of story components and you don't really know how to hold or where to put all of those things? Well, Campfire is probably the most robust um, like collector of story information that I have ever seen. Now, I have tried to do a lot of different organization methods when it comes to trying to organize my thoughts and my characters and my like basically whole stories in various different like notepads and things like that and it's really difficult because there's just so many things to think about and campfire is pretty much built from the ground up to be like a super super helpful um, really really in-depth and detailed collection of all of the things you need to know if you're doing narrative art. Um, so there's like a whole section where you can create characters and you can put in all kinds of details about them and then you can go into other parts of campfire and then those characters will be something you can actually select like you can put them into a scene, you can um, basically put them into different areas of the map where they're likely to be or where their house is. It all kind of flows together in a really natural way and it just it's crazy to me that something like this exists also all of these like um, windows that you see are drag and drop so you can move them around if you don't need like the notes category or if you don't need the physical attributes category you can just like remove that um, you can move it around you can make things bigger or smaller um, it's really 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 uh, in depth like it's almost intimidating how much there is to actually put in um, sometimes you won't even know that much information about your character or the setting or whatever um, and it will get you thinking about those things as well which I think is really really useful useful and really cool. I particularly like the timeline part of um, Campfire. Basically, you can like put in essentially what looks like kind of like a word map um, and you can make connections between different events. You can 
demarcate whether they're like big events or minor events, what characters are part of them. Um, you can have a whole encyclopedia for your world and then add in things that are relevant to that event um, from the encyclopedia. It's just, it's, it's incredibly um, powerful. It feels a little bit overwhelming, but um, I really think this could help you out a lot if you're the type of person who likes to do narrative art and storytelling and you get sort of like uh, lost in the details or you have a struggle sort of figuring out all the information that you need to know before you start your comic or whatever, um, Campfire is the way to go. Now I will say it is a bit on the pricey side, especially because it still definitely has a bit of like a jankiness to it. I don't know how to explain it. It doesn't feel 100% polished, even though it is extremely in depth with what you can do with it. But luckily you can actually use it for all of April for free if you like. Um, I'm guessing they're doing that because of COVID-19 and everyone's inside. A lot of different companies seem to be giving stuff away for free right now. So if you wanna try it out, um, you can do that for free in April. As for the cost for the full versions, there's a pro version which um, is $50. It's a one-time fee so it's not like a subscription and then there's one that has even more stuff that's like $64 right now because it's on sale. It's usually $74. I do feel like if you have trouble organizing your narratives, it could really be worth it. Um, but I totally understand if that's a bit too steep for some of you guys. I just wanted to mention it because it is kind of, I, I don't know of anything else that works this way um, and that works this well for visual storytelling just because there's so many opportunities to put in pictures and so many different like visual ways of um, like organizing your story, like the the maps and everything. I just think it works really well if you're the type of person who thinks in images. Um, so I thought I'd mention it because yeah, a lot of artists do. So those were some of my favorite like art resources um, that I've run across lately. Let me know if you have any that you like to use and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't do review type videos very often, but I just had so many recommendations. I kind of wanted to put it in a video. I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you to all of my patrons, including Bald-Headed Potato, Bella Story, Best Kaiju, Braggy, Calpon Pong, Lion, Don't Eat Soap, Dr. Casket, Alaria Louie, Eric G, Greer the Animator, Griffix, Hachiyubi, Ice Cream Pal, Ivan Rodriguez, JJJ, Joseph Copel, Le Blah Blah Blah, Marina Costa, Mr. Dr. Pants, Nicole Ludwak, Nicolette Queen, Nora Cornelson, Ruin Wayne Crow, Some Mediocre Artists, The RC Moose, Throat Foam, XAM, and Yaboya's Tea.